Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by making tutorial videos about Luminar Neo. So if that is of interest to you, feel free to subscribe. Uh, give me a like if you like this video. And what I'm talking about in this video is the Crop AI tool. It is different than the Composition AI tool that existed in the previous product called Luminar AI. And I will say that the Crop AI, it's generally working fine, but I don't feel like it's finished. I, f it, I feel like it's missing some things that we had in Composition AI. Uh, well, it is missing some things, I should say. I feel like it needs to be improved uh, because the things that we had in Composition AI were really useful. I'll talk about that, but I also wanted to walk through how it works because I've had some questions about Crop AI. Let's get into it. I've got a photo here. I already did some edits, just kind of played around with a couple of different things. Um, over uh, in landscape. I used golden hour and then in develop as well. So I am over here and crop AI is at the very top. And I think that's for a reason. I'm, I'm personally of the opinion that I like to crop most of the time um, right before I get started editing. I kind of want to get my canvas. I want to get it, the lines, uh, you know, the horizon straight. I want to crop it if I'm going to crop it. Although I will totally admit that there's also a school of thought that you might be of the opinion, hey, I don't know if I want to crop it until I've edited it and kind of get a feel for the image and at the end decide it would actually look better if it was square or, you know, whatever. So it doesn't matter. Do whatever you like. I tend to crop at first, but I also am very much a creature of habit. I really like, like really, really like 16 by 9. I kind of like that wide view. I like wide angles. I just, ugh, whatever. Um, but you don't have to do that. You do whatever you like. So there's a couple of things to be aware of. The first is people have said, hey, how do I get it to work? Like I come in here and I've made my adjustments to my aspect ratio and then I hit a crop AI and it doesn't work. And that's because if you hit that crop AI button, that purple one right up here, it's actually designed, as the name implies, to use AI to analyze the scene and apply a crop. So it's going to disregard any moves that you previously made. Um, I don't use that. I Again, I generally am doing 16 by 9 uh, unless I like what I have and I'm just cutting out a little bit of stuff on the edge. Maybe there's an errant person like walking into the frame or something. I might crop them out and keep the same aspect ratio. But just keep that in mind. Crop AI is basically AI suggesting a crop for you. In this case, it suggested this one, which is fine. You know, it, it looks fine. Um, and then you can always come in and make adjustments to that. So I could come in and do these kind of things where you can grab these little uh, solid white uh, corners or bars on the top and bottom or sides and adjust accordingly. And then, of course, you can always hit that arrow to revert back to the original crop as shot. So that's what Crop AI does. It suggests a crop for you. Under the ratio section, this is where you choose your own. And in order to choose your own in a free method, meaning you can move any um, of the sides in the extent that you want in any direction, um, click on free. That's also known as unlocked. Um, whereas like these aspect ratios, they're locked. So if I pick two by three, um, well, that's not a good example. Let me pick a different one. Let me pick, um, well, let me pick 16 by nine. But here's the thing. If I come in and try to move this, it's not um, allowing me to freely move the, um, or adjust the crop. It's basically just adjusting the size of the 16 by nine aspect ratio because that's a locked aspect ratio. Whereas if you come into free, you can come in and freely adjust any of these sections um, to the extent that you want. So in other words, it's an unlocked aspect ratio when you're using free versus using any of these that have the numbers in this drop down. Those are locked. So when it's locked, as you move the sides around, it's going to adjust based on that aspect ratio. So it basically forces you to stick with that aspect ratio, which can be fine. Maybe that works just fine. In fact, I, again, I usually mostly use 16 by 9 and then adjust the size of it accordingly, but do whatever you like. But I wanted to point out the difference. Um, also, there's transpose, which is basically taking the aspect ratio as shot and flipping it. So this was shot, um, you know, landscape. And I think this is a uh, Olympus camera. So I think it's a four by three because it's a micro four thirds. Um, and now it's flipped it and it's basically made it a three by four. That doesn't really work here because I can't fit every, uh, you know, the main components of these people in those C stacks into the frame. But that's what transposed does. Um, also, this button here on the right hand side, that also is transposed. Uh, now, the cool thing is you can come in here and let's say, um, well, let's say you do a free. Let's just move this around and make adjustments. And let's say I have something like that and I like it. I could also hit transpose 
and it takes that same aspect ratio and flips it the other way. So just it's a way to uh, look and see if you want to flip your crop, um, keeping the same aspect ratio, but just flipping it from uh, horizontal to vertical or I guess vice versa. So lots of power, lots of control. Um, and then of course, there's custom things you can do. You can create a Facebook feed or a Facebook cover photo if you want based on those aspect ratios. For me, I like 16 by nine, it's just a thing. Um, in this case, I'd probably go um, about like that. Um, I want to get as much of that upper uh, section of colorful clouds. Like some of this stuff is less uh, important to me. Um, and I'm, you know, I want to get this bottom uh, line here on the kind of the tic-tac-toe board. I kind of want to get that on the horizon. This is basing, this grid line is the rule of thirds. You're, I'm sure you're familiar with that. But basically, they say that like horizon lines are great along one of these lines. Um, and where these intersection points occur, like here and here, it's often good to place a subject on those. They're called like power points, those intersection points. It's where your eye may naturally be drawn. And you might look at something that's shot in that way and think, that's a nice composition because it's lined up on the rule of thirds. Now, there's other things like the golden ratio, and we're not going to get into all, all that. But if you're interested, please go read about it. It's actually really interesting stuff. And this is kind of using the rule of thirds to help you kind of use that tic-tac-toe board to decide where do you want to line up your crop. And maybe my 16 by 9 looks good, except I see a tiny little tree there. I'm going to pull that in a little bit more and maybe a little bit higher, and maybe I'll just hit enter. And then um, that's how you apply your crop. You hit enter. You don't necessarily go in and hit the crop AI button, because if you do that, um, that will apply the crop that AI thinks the photo ought to have. So just remember, that's the difference. Um, horizon alignment, that's a button you can click automatically, and it will adjust the horizon to what it considers straight. I, I don't know that it always works perfectly well. I tend to just have my uh, mouse. You see, if you have your mouse here on the outside of the frame, it will uh, give you this little two-headed kind of semi-curved arrow, and that basically allows you to just grab the photo and twist, and you'll notice when you twist, you've got all these lines which are really helpful because they help you figure out, okay, where's the straight line that's closest to a line that should be straight in the photo, which is usually the horizon. So in this case, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and leave it. And again, when you're ready to apply your crop, you don't hit the crop AI button. You can just hit enter and it will apply the crop and uh, you'll be all set. So keep that in mind. Um, and then the bottom section is rotate and flip. So as the name implies, if I rotate, it will just rotate the photo around and just keep clicking it till you get all the way back. It only goes in that counterclockwise position. Flip horizontal does exactly what it sounds like, which actually looks pretty cool here. I've done that in a number of photos. Um, and it's, uh, it's surprising how much of an impact, a visual impact, just a, horizon, uh, not a, uh, just a horizontal flip like that can have on your photo. So that's the way it's, uh, it looks in real life, I guess. And that's how it looks in my little fantasy world here. So that's a, a fun little trick. And then this one, of course, is the opposite. That's flipping it vertically, which you would not do here. But you could use that, I guess, if you're like adding an extra image layer and flipping it. I haven't tried that, but it kind of makes sense. Um, anyway, so that is how that works. Now, the thing that uh, things I should say that are plural um, that they're missing. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter um, and apply that in Luminar AI. In fact, let me just get Luminar AI and show you. Okay, different photo, but here's a Luminar AI, and this was called Composition AI, not Crop AI. And the difference is you had this little button here, which is uh, under this section called Perspective. And this Perspective, now in Luminar Neo, let's get this tool open again, is just called Horizon Alignment. And it has that line which is going to automatically adjust the horizon. You had that line here, but you also had this one, and this one is Automatic Vertical Correction. So like... This is probably not a great example, but like if you shoot with a, right, a wide angle lens and buildings might be looking like they're leaning backwards, it'll help straighten those verticals automatically. That's hugely important. That's a really big deal and incredibly useful. And it was such a, such a great, useful tool in Luminar AI. I hope they bring that into Neo. And the other section that they had in Composition AI is this image 3D transform where you can do vertical or horizontal uh, adjustments. As you can see here, I'll double click to reset it. Horizontal is just going to swing the photo one way or the other. And then aspect ratio is actually going to kind of squish it or extend it depending on which way you go. Also useful. So I would love if they would bring back this little button right here, which is automatic vertical corrections. 
and then the 3D transform, which I would actually use often in tandem with that vertical correction in order to straighten up buildings and things like that. But as of right now, the Crop AI tool looks like this and is missing those other perspective correction tools. I hope they bring them. We really need them. Uh, but that is how Crop AI works and some things to know about it and uh, that sort of thing. And then there's my photo. I kind of like that. It's, it was a beautiful sunset, as you can tell. Uh, but hopefully that answers the questions that I've been getting about Crop AI, how it works, how to use it, what the different things do, and all that. So thanks for watching, my friends. Hope this was helpful. I appreciate it. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll be back really soon with more videos. Until then, adios.